This is One Breath Left by Stout Stout Press. I just played this game last night, and I had a fantastic time playing it. One Breath Left is a solo game, so if you've been looking for a role-playing game to play by yourself, this is going to be exactly the game for you. Uh, it is a procedurally generated solo game, which is probably one of my favorite elements of this game. Here's the basic pitch. You are an explorer. You've been tasked to go to a shipwreck out in space. You're going to explore that wreck as best you can, looking for clues as to what maybe went wrong with this place. Whatever the mission parameters have kind of laid out for you, you are racing against the clock, but in this case, the clock is your oxygen tank, aka you have one breath left as you move quickly through this ship to figure out what the heck is going on and make the most out of this contract. It's great. So when I say procedurally generated, here's what I mean. This comes with a really cool like deck of square cards, and a bunch of these cards are uh, like rooms in the ship. So for example, you always start in an airlock, and then there's a whole bunch of other rooms that you can go to that have different orientations, different doorways, and things like that. And every time you are moving around on the board here, you're flipping up the next card on the top of the deck, placing it, orienting it however you can, and now you're slowly building the ship as you go around exploring the entire thing. When you think about it, it kind of perfectly encapsulates the idea of like fog of war almost, but not war necessarily, but in this case, just the the exploration of the unknown, right? When you're traveling through a dungeon, you don't want to be able to see the whole dungeon map. You want to see it explore as you go room by room. This is exactly what's going on in a sci-fi setting. The game is a mix of like journaling, like the solo journaling aspects that we see in a lot of solo games, and then elements of like almost like a board game. The board game that this really reminds me of is Deep Sea Adventure by Oink Games. If you're not familiar, you're treasure hunters going underwater, trying to collect treasure, fighting against a, an oxygen tank that is uh, that is trying to like essentially suffocate you over time. It's push your luck, meet solo journaling in a really, really satisfying way. The game itself comes in this really nifty box and then it has the deck of cards in it three different booklets that you use to play the game. The operation manual tells you the rules of the game, but then mostly what you're gonna be using are these two things, the <laughs> Explorer's Notebook and the Navigation Guide. The Explorer's Notebook has a list of all the different explorers that you could be. So these are background people. So last night I played as an analyst. These things give you your maximum lung capacity. They give you like a style, a skill that you have, things that you're interested in, and a whole bunch of questions that you can ask yourself to put a, sort of give yourself a background. There's also a list of essentially missions that you go on. These missions are things that are telling you sort of like how to flavor your exploration of this ship. What exactly are you looking for? So for example, the one that I tried last night, I think I was like working for an insurance company. Like I was trying to assess the insurance claims of something that was going on the ship. So I was looking for certain clues that might have indicated what had gone wrong in the ship based off of like cracks in windows or like weird leaky pipes and things like that. And then there's a whole bunch of different ships in here. And the ships also kind of give you a sense of uh, a new way of playing the game each time because the ships have what are called peril events. And these peril events kick in as you start to use up your oxygen. There's so much replayability in this game. You can choose different explorers to be different missions, different sort of setups in terms of how the ship works that you could keep playing as the same explorer, assuming you survive, or you could play as a totally different person and be a new explorer going into a new ship with a different uh, sort of mission structure behind it. There's not necessarily rules for an advancement system, but you don't really need advancement in this. It's all about the experience of finding out what's going on in the next ship. Uh, it's an awesome game of battling back and forth between sort of a gamified moving around a map and thinking about when you want to push your luck in terms of spending this valuable oxygen resource. And then like contemplative journaling that's going on as you're thinking about all these different things. The navigation guide giving you insights into each of the rooms, telling you events that might happen, uh, asking you questions to ponder. It was a really great way to spend the night last night. I can't wait to play it again. New explorer, new ship, new mission and everything like that. So if you're looking for kind of a, a new solo game with a little bit of chew, check out One Breath Left. All right, until next time, bye.